Civil conflict in the North came to an end, so they say. Victory celebrations again and again. Many were hopeful democracy will be delivered. They expected the disappearances would cease and social justice would prevail. While the drama of the Rainbow Revolution being written prior to the actual transition of power, President Mahinda Rajapaksa called for a snap presidential election two years earlier. He was certain about securing power. However, an unpredicted opponent came to the arena with the support of the right, who was strengthened by certain actors who called themselves leftists. They put forward the slogans of good governance and democratic rights. Slogans demanding democracy have been blown away with the wind. However, they created the basis of the victory for President Maitripala Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. The foremost of the demands, to bring about justice to those who disappeared and invite those who fled the island to return back home. Now the Rainbow Revolution is over. The society is back in slumber as it was used to, but it cannot overrun or weigh down the struggle for democratic rights. Lalit Kumar Viraraj and Kuhan Muruganandan of Frontline Socialist Party were engaged in collecting information about those who were abducted and disappeared in Jaffna. A press conference with regard to disappearances was scheduled at Jaffna on the 10th of December 2011. On the 9th of December, their own names were added to this list of the involuntarily disappeared. Lalith was the older brother of three sisters and the only son of a family who lived in Padukka Avisavel. It was a time where people's democratic rights were denied. As the district organizer of Frontline Socialist Party, he was assigned the responsibility to find those who went missing and to campaign for the freedom of the lives of those living in the North. In the face of endless obstacles and harassment by security forces, he continued traveling throughout the Jaffna Peninsula. Families of the disappeared treated and accepted him as one of their own sons. His activities as a dedicated human rights activist were obvious, but he knew there is an imminent risk of being hunted down. 
यातुर धाम में मास या की तरह थी मैंने मेरे को त्याग नहीं लगा लबा। मन जीवात तो इन्हें ऐने बंग उड़ा कर उन्हें तुम बाला आंडा आंडे पाए आइए नितर में ये हैं ना तो आइए तो हितने में ये गुड़ा कर जीवात तो इन्हें के ले आइए तो तेल ना तो मैं यार दीप फोटो तूने मा आइए दुम्ने अभी तुम देना आता है even with the war being over the entire jaffna peninsula remained a high security zone amongst heavy presence of security forces and intelligence apparatus how could a human rights activist go missing keli rangu kala kiya dinna inna hatur dang ila ne idena attarangu gar innawa kiyala idin kiyala naduwata ekka naduwata wat peni kiyana keli rangu kala yawa kende wetna ekke prashna kiwa man meka sanipa ne pitrata giyala ekke ekke wasiwa ida wasse kiyala tibba me me mata मेरा ये प्रकाश एक करने की हुआ मैं आली लाली को कर ना तो दांगे ला मैं ना अब तक दांग बार इन्होंने किला एक आई मामा की हुई किला या किला तीन ना के लिए ना बुक कर ले The way that the Rajapaksa government responded and handled the disappearance of Lalit and Kuhan pointed fingers towards them. गया दंग का बास गोड़ा गया विपक्ष हैं गीला मगर ये आना कोटे थी ना आला बास सोल्टा है ना तो ये ला आप ये आने तो दी प्रश्न करा प्रश्न गोड़ा करा अम्मे आमु दावे The disappearance of Lalit and Kohan brought fear back to the north once again. The abductions and disappearances were a clear indication that even though the armed conflict was over, the issues of winning democratic rights and freedom still remained. आतुरदांग इच्छाएँ क्या ना फिर कितने गाती हूँ ना फिर मैं पीटा करती हूँ इधर बस एक रात भी लाई थी यार ना ये आलागे दे माफी हो ना आतुरदांग इच्छाएँ आतुरदांग इच्छाएँ के दे माफी है मैं भी लाई थी यार तीन ये आलाकी है ना फिर मैं वो ये आलागे निकाम में साहूदरे की तरह है ये � Lalit was active among the parents and relatives of missing persons in Jaffna for about a year. It was not a long period of time, but the bond was so close. Matalang hari Adam berai ayah kene itu nak buat hari kene hidup kene mama ke sahabat kene atur dengan ikhik kene mama saya ada duduk kene mama. Saranga lost the protection of her father when she needed it the most. Kuhan Muruganandan was abducted along with Lalit Kumar Viraraj at Achuveli Jaffna, demonstrating once more the true nature of Sri Lankan democracy. Ani alpan orang teri alpan bukan anda lori berlalu itu boleh yang elang teri pada kan orang kerja kele. Di mana cuci air polis dia pada anda ini ini orang anjing mana kita orang panjang itu. Tapi apa? Na hari kerja boleh polis segera pernah pergi ni mana yang sana? Na tangan teri kau itu kan? Entah mungkin orang kerja kele apa yang sana? Kalau rumun dalam ekstrak cuci air polis dia boleh. Kohan left the LTTE, for which he was actively involved in for about 10 years. Having made the decision, he started making a living by a small trade and he started a new life with his wife and daughter. Meeting Lalit Kumar Viraraj, the district organizer of Frontline Socialist Party, was a new juncture for Kuhan's life. Visiting the families of the disappeared in Jaffna, assisting them to collect information of the whereabouts of their loved ones, and to help them to strengthen their downtrodden families was a duty next to his life. The human rights activist already knew it was really putting his life at risk once again. Mm -hmm. 
தேடுற விதத்தில் தான் எனக்கு சங்கினாங்க நல்ல அழித்து யாழ்ப்பாணத்தில் வந்து இந்த கட்சியின் இதில் வெளிப்படுத்துகிறார் நோக்கமாக இருக்கல லலித்தும் குரல் செய்வதுன்னு கட்சியின் கொள்கைகளை வெளிப்படுத்தி யாழ்ப்பாண மக்களுக்கு உணர புதிய வைக்கணும் என்ற ஒரு காரணத்தால் லலித்தையும் குணம் கடத்தியிருக்கல After the war, being in an area with a strong presence of security forces and the fact that the abduction occurred in broad daylight, this disappearance paints a grim picture of Sri Lankan democracy with colors of terror. Makkalmathila andha nerathila phone kaana ponnathila makkalmathila makkal pirsa kadaikka payapiduvaanga dhaan thangalukku indhe maari nadandiruma appo en solli. Pesam eppadi Five years have gone by after her beloved father's abduction. Saranga is learning to live. Her father's wish was for her to be a lawyer one day. Why was she denied the affection and protection of her father? Having served as a teacher for generations, Rajamani Gunaratnam is waiting for her only son alive to return home safe. Her son's playing about at home in childhood is still fresh in her memories. Both sons, Ranjidhan Gunaratnam and uh, Prem Kumar Gunaratnam, both studied at St. Mary's College from their childhood. And they uh, passed the competitive examinations, the scholarship examinations, both passed. And uh, my elder son, Rajidhan Gunaratnam, Uh, been to Pinola Mahavidyalaya uh, for his A level classes he studied in the maths media and he successfully passed the A level and he entered the university uh, college the engineering section in the same way uh, the my small younger son he also followed his brother's footsteps he passed his uh, uh, A level examination successfully, and he also entered the engineering section at Peradeni. The infamous Black July of 1983 marked the beginning of a dark phase in Sri Lankan history. In 1989, when democracy was a scarcity in the country, the sons of Rajamani Gunaratnam were leading the student movement in the university. The older son, Ranjidhan Gunaratnam. became the convener of the inter-university student federation as a result of student political activism he was arrested several times and finally went missing the army forces had come to my house in kegol they had asked the father where the mother and the daughter and he had said that they were in kalambo so he came to that place in the midnight at about 2 o'clock in the midnight and they tapped our door and i was scared but i slowly opened the door because i had my young daughter with me so i saw some army forces in the jeep and they told me your husband is also in the van you both come and we are going to show your elder son so we also we were happy to see him so we both got they then we got into the van they blindfolded our eyes and we just sat on on the uh, van and we three went we didn't know where they took us they went very far and they came to some place and we didn't know what that place was so i asked him said the armies who were there i asked them several times to show my son but they said they did not get orders from the higher places and they asked us to wait and the next day again they blindfolded our eyes and they 
took them to a, to a room. My husband didn't come because he was walking on crutches. So my daughter and I went to that room, but we were blindfolded. And we stayed there for about five minutes, and again they brought us back. So that night we were given a hall, just a hall, a spacious hall. And there were so many army forces going up and down, and we had to sleep there. So I, I wrapped my daughter with, a, with my sari, own sari, and we both slept on the floor there. And the next morning, and the next morning also, I, I asked them, and they said, no, we didn't get any uh, information from the higher authorities, so we are taking you all home. By 1994, there was a considerable gap after the end of the armed conflict. The loss of her older son brought her an unending pain. Kumar Gunaratnam, her only living son, was attempting to place their political party within mainstream politics to establish and uphold democracy. So he was involved in the politics and uh, owing to some death threats, he had to leave the country and for his own safeguard, he went to Australia with his uh, family. Kumar Gunaratnam led the party to leave the alliance, which led to the Rajapaksa government too to steer away completely from coalition politics. For that reason, he was mandated by a majority of the party. In 2012, the mother of Gunaratnam received more bad news. Then all of a sudden we got uh, news that uh, Kumar's friends, they had informed us to come immediately to Colombo. So on the same day, we went to Colombo and we got the information that Kumar was missing. So his friends, they all got together and searched him everywhere and we also went with them. We searched him, but we could not find him on the second, third day. My daughter and we went to the Australian University and, and they also said that he is a citizen of ours and we are also searching for him. And on the third day we got news that he had been deported to Australia. Having lost her older son, she was in greater grief that she was going to lose her only son living. When I heard that he was abducted, all of a sudden my mind went through the last incidents of my elder son. So I thought the same thing will happen to my younger son also. So I uh, so I was very sad and I fainted and I had all sorts of uh, illness and from the day I lost my son, 1989, still I have my pressure and I'm still with my tablets. That is so many years back and that comes to my mind and I'm still grieving for him. It was at this first phase of the new left political movement called the Frontline Socialist Party when Kumar Gunaratnam a political bureau member of that party was abducted. At the same time, another political bureau member, Dimutu Artigala, was also abducted. It was later alleged that the Rajapaksa regime was responsible for this abduction. Bending to pressure built up at a local and international level, they had to release Kumar and to deport him to Australia. He returned to the island in 2015 responding to a promise of the newly formed government. Under its good governance policies, the new government openly invited those who fled the country during the former regime to return home, promising that they won't be harmed. All of a sudden he came to our house and I was excited to see my son coming from Australia. We hugged each other and we, I was very glad to see him after a very long time. And uh, yeah, and he came again and he knew that I was suffering from, uh, uh, from my leg ailment and he 
uh, had uh, prepared a doctor at Ragama and he asked me to go with one of his friends to get the medicine. So I went with him and uh, Kumar was at home with his sister. So when I, I came back and after a few minutes, the police did came. Kumar Gunaratnam, political bureau member of Frontline Socialist Party, was arrested under allegations relating to citizenship on the 4th of November 2015. Locking him behind bars has made the mother in her 80s struggle once again. Having returned to the island, Kumar applied for Sri Lankan citizenship repeatedly. But the authorities, without any consideration of his legitimate rights, took the matter to courts, revealing their political motives as well as the contradictions in their preach and practice with regard to good governance policies. Prem Kumar, he was uh, born in the General Hospital, Kegol, and he was educated here, and he continued his higher studies here, and he was involved in politics, and he did not go anywhere. He, is a citizen. he has got his citizenship in Sri Lanka, so why does the government uh, hesitate in giving him his uh, citizenship? That is why I want to ask, and I am 80 years old now, I, and I want my son to be with me, and he is a great uh, help to me, so I want him here. Why does the government hesitate in giving his citizenship? That is my question. Struggles of solidarity have been developed locally and internationally, demanding the citizenship of Kumar Gunaratnam and in search of Lalith and Kuhan. These experiences cannot be considered as isolated cases unless there is closure. The struggle to uphold democracy in Sri Lanka has been a debacle throughout its short history. It must be reiterated that these Sri Lankan experiences we live through due to absence of true democracy, consolidate a preface of an impending threat towards workers, students, farmers, and leaders, as well as human rights activists. <laughs>